All right, we're gonna do the dog lab now. And uh, the dog lab is one of the early labs that we learn and it is going to teach you how to create a class. So I don't know if you remember, but last week we discussed that there are two types of variables in Java. There are primitive variables and then there are class variables. We learned three different types of primitives. We learned integers, we learned double, which are decimal numbers, and we learned Boolean, which contains true or false. We also briefly discussed a couple of classes. We said system was a class that helps us print things. And we said string was a class that allowed us to keep strings together, like names of people and things like that. So let me just briefly show you what a string looks like. So here is your flag project. And here's an example of a string like that. I could have also put this particular string inside a variable called string i should have could have gone like this okay that's better uh let's run this there you go it still works you can see there's the top line and the bottom line i put the top line temporarily into a variable now one of the things we said that was different between primitives that look like this and classes that look like this you can see that the primitives start with a small letter and classes in Java start with a capital letter. The difference between an int and a string is that when Java was created, the primitives were the ones, the data types that were built into the language. Strings are defined either by the user or provided by a library. So string was not part of Java. String was written much later. It comes in automatically in a library so you don't have to import it. But this is an example of something that was not originally built into the language. The other thing I wanna mention here is that even though we can create a string like this, most uh, classes that we'll be designing, you will need to do something like this in order to create a new one, a new object of a string. So something like that. You can see that the syntax here is slightly different because I have to use this keyword new and then I have to say what it is that I'm creating. In this case, I'm creating a string. So what we're going to do today is we're going to build our own class. This will be the first class that we build together. And what we're going to do is we're going to put it in an own separate project. It's not part of the flag project because it's got nothing to do with flags. So we're going to come over here and say project, new project. And we're going to say dog project like that. Oops, already exists. I'll call this dog project uh, 1A. All righty. So I'm going to create, you can just call yours dog project. So there I've created a brand new project. So getting back to our dog class here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a new class. And uh, let's see here. Mr. Owen, sir, can you guess what we're going to call this class? That's right, sir. And classes in Java are capitalized. So we're going to go with a capital D for dog like that. It's important you capitalize your classes. And there we go. And you can see it's got the slashy things to say we haven't compiled it yet. We could compile it right now, but you can see there's not even a main program in here. Uh, we can't really do anything with this. And what we're going to do is we're going to create one additional class. And we're going to call that the dog tester. Notice that the capital D and the capital T, the capital D is because this is a class and the capital T is because it's a new word inside the class. That makes it easy to read. And we're going to call that the dog tester. And I'll just move that over here. First thing we're going to do is we're going to make the dog. Then we're going to make different types of dogs. And then we'll put the main method in here to help us test the dog. So let's open up the dog class now. And there it is. And let us to just make sure I'm recording this correctly. Okay. And let us do uh, form some good habits by putting our name and today's date in here. Uh, and then let us uh delete all this boilerplate that exists down here now what we're going to do is we're going to set aside 
two uh we'll, we'll create a little boundary here so i'm going to create a comment and put this little boundary here and what we'll do is up here we will put the uh the data section and then over here uh let me let me change that let me say the variables section over here and down here we will put the the the, the methods uh the, the code the the actual functions that of the dog so th that's basically every class has two parts uh, these are just comments uh to help you sort of delineate which parts are which you don't really need these but it helps you read it we're going to track three pieces of information about the dog can anyone guess what three pieces we're going to track here mr Mitty, sir if you had a dog what's well, something you might want to know about the dog the name so we're going to use uh, a, a, the name and we're going to call it the name variable. And now my next question, that would be for you, Mr. Diego, what would be the data type for something that stores a name? Do you think it would be like an integer, a double, a string, a Boolean? What do you think? It would be a string. So we're going to go string name like that. Now, we don't want anyone to be able to just come in here and change the name or even ask the name, uh, even like get the name directly. We want it to go through some methods. So we want to keep our variables private. So we want to put the word private here in front of all the, the variables we're going to have for the dog class. I'll explain in another class exactly what this means. In fact, we'll talk about this through the whole year. But for right now, just kind of take my word for it that we're going to put the word private here in front of this name variable. Let's see, who is next? Is that Miss Ishita? What else might we want to keep track of about the dog, Ishita? Their age. So now we're going to need a variable called age. And like that. And uh, who is that sitting next to? Mr. Bello, sir? Is that you? Sir, what kind of uh, variable should we use here? Integer, that is correct. That's the data types. I said variable. I meant integer, uh, data type. Now, could we have used a decimal number, Mr. Bellow, for the age? Yeah, we could have used a decimal number, but I think integer makes more sense because if someone asks you how old you are, you don't say, like, I'm 14.7 years old. You don't say that, right? So I think integer makes the most sense. And once again, we want to make it private here. And so um, I think that that's a good uh, way to store the age right there. And the other thing we're going to track about the dog is going to be the weight of the dog. And for that, we will use a decimal number. And we're going to use freedom units here. Uh, so we'll use pounds. We're not going to use any of that uh, kilogram business. Okay, so we got, our, we got our name, we got our age, and we got our weight. So that's good. And now what we're going to do is we're going to come down to the methods section and we're going to write code here that is going to allow the user to manipulate these variables. And the variables can be set, they can be changed, and they can be retrieved. And the methods are going to comprise two groups. The first group is we're going to call the getter methods. And these are uh, retrieve data. Hope I spelled that right. I before E. No. Okay, maybe that's right. And then we're going to have another set, which are called the setter methods. And these are these mutate mutate data. They change the data. These are also called mutators. Okay. So these just simply return the data. This lets you change the data. So we have two groups of methods down here. So let me just put in here methods like that. Okay. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a getter method for the name that will allow someone to ask the dog its name. So if I if, if someone creates a dog and says, hey, what's your name? The dog will return the name. So to do that, we're going to say public because we want to allow anyone to call these methods. And we're going to say get name like that. 
And this method is going to return an answer. The answer it's going to return is going to be of type string because the name is a string variable. And all this thing is going to do is just going to return the name like that. And you can see I use these curly brackets to start and end the method. And now I need to take a couple of minutes and explain to you exactly what's going on here because it's not really so obvious. All right. So what's happening here is that I've created a method. Now, this is probably the first method we've written in some detail. And a method is a set of instructions that someone can call. It's a set of instructions. If you took AP Computer Science principles with me, this is what we used to call a function, a function. In Java, just calls functions methods. I, I don't know why. And so this is the name of the method. These parentheses indicate that it's a method. In Java, the verbs or the methods have parentheses, and the nouns or the things do not have parentheses. You see that, right? Here's a noun. It's a thing. No parentheses. Here's a verb, an action word. It has parentheses. Inside the parentheses, I would put all the information that this method needs to do its job. This particular method doesn't need any information. So that's why inside the parentheses, there's nothing. Over here, that's called the return type. That defines whether this method returns a value. And if it does, what's the data type of that value? You can see that this method returns a string to whoever called it. And here is the accessibility word that tells you who can call this method. And I'm allowing anyone to call this method, so I've created it public. In this beginner class for Java programming, pretty much all our data are going to be private and all our methods are going to be public. So that's pretty easy to remember. This method doesn't do very much. It's got only a single line of instruction. It just says, take the name variable and whatever's in it, return that as the answer. These curly brackets define where the method begins and where the method ends. All the code, in this case, it's just one line, but all the code that's between these two curly brackets makes up this get name method. What I need you to do now is work with your partner and creating a get age method and a great get weight weight method and put them right underneath here. Okay, right, right after this curly bracket, put the next one starting over there. So I made this one, you're gonna make these two. After you write each method, hit the compile button to make sure you haven't made any mistakes. If you're having trouble because there's red on your screen that you can't get rid of, if you raise your hand, Mr. Roth will come by and help you. For those of you that already did this exercise with me last year, my apologies that the first two weeks of school will have some repetition, but it won't do you any harm. I know it's also been a long summer and you've forgotten some stuff, so this will help you remember. Now, where did I leave off? I think, Ms. Mullen, you're next. Ms. Mullen, can you help me write the getter method for the age? Notice the differences between the get name method here and the get age method here. This one returned a string, but this one's going to return an integer because age is an integer. Notice that both methods are public and both methods are using a return value to return the value that is stored in a variable. I forgot to mention one thing. These variables go by other names. They're also called properties of the class. And um, what else are they called? Uh, Mr. Roth, help me here. They're called variables, properties. What else did I call them last year? Do you remember? Uh, for these variables here. I think, I think that was it. That was it? Okay. Variables. variables, properties. Okay. We'll think of some other names later. And now I want to do the last one here, the weight. Uh, Mr. Dominic, sir, can you help me write the get weight method?
Okay, so we finished writing all our getters. Now we're going to move on to the setter methods. I'm going to write the first one for you. I'm going to write the, actually, you know what? I'll, I'll do the set weight one, and then you'll do these other two here. So it's going to be public void set weight, and it's going to be double new weight. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say weight equals new weight like that. So let's talk a little bit about how this method is different from the getter methods we've written. The first thing you'll notice is that the return type has been set to void, which is a word that we haven't really talked about very much. Okay, we're going to talk a little bit more about this method. Here's the name of the method, set weight. It has a void return type. This is Java, Java's way of telling you that this method does not return a value. Okay, it does some work, but it doesn't return anything. Notice there's no return statement in here. See that? Now, it does need something to do its work. If you want to set the weight of the dog, you got to tell it what value to set it to, and you're going to pass that information in this variable called new weight, which happens to be a double. Why is it a double? Because the weight itself is a double, and so you want to set this one, take its value, and put it into this permanent weight variable. And that's what I'm doing here. I'm taking whatever was given to it in the method, taking that value, which is a decimal number, and storing it in the weight var variable, which is the property of the class. Okay, so I'm taking the temporary variable here and storing its value in the permanent variable here, which is the property of the class. Now, I would like you to work with your partner on writing the two other set methods, the one for the age and the one for the name. Please get on that now. After you write each one, hit the compile button to make sure you haven't made any mistakes. If you have red on your screen you can't get rid of, raise your hand and someone will come and help you. Okay, I think we had left off at Mr. Baker. Mr. Van Dusen, you're up next, sir. Sir, can you tell me how to write the get age method? Like that. And uh, Ms. Nuha, you're up next with the get na uh, set name method. And that basically completes our set of methods for now. We're going to add a few more in a few minutes. But we've got our getters and we've got our setters. We're all good. I'm going to hit the compile button one more time to make sure it all works. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a main method to test this code. Now, I could put the main method right in here, but that's kind of a sloppy thing to do. It's much better to take your test code and put it in a separate class so that it doesn't really muddy up this class here, which you've written. So the test code I'm going to put in this other class here called the dog tester. So I'm going to open up that dog tester class now. And once again, I'm going to put my name and today's date in here. And I'm going to put the date in here. And I'm going to delete all this boilerplate that I don't need. And I'm going to ask for the magic words of Java. And Mr. Burnett, you are up, sir. Can you tell me the magic words of Java? Okay. And I'm going to hit the compile button to make sure I did all that right. And then I'm going to put in here, I'm going to create a dog. Now, I mentioned to you before that one way you can create a string is like this. like that and so now my next question to you is if that's the way i create a string how do i create a dog mr brian sir can you tell me how would i create a dog yeah. sir a dog is not a string they don't have anything to do with each other but look at this sentence here this line of code and try to replace where you see string with dog. So start over here. And instead of saying string S, what would we say? 
You're not getting it? Okay, Mr. Kevin, you want to try it? Oh, yes. So we can't use S because S is already used here, and the compiler will complain that we have two variables with the same name. What, na what variable could we use for a dog? We could use A. But I'm just going to use D because it begins with dog, but that, you could use A. Okay, let's go equals. Now what? New dog like that. Okay, so that's how we make a string. That's how we make a dog. All right. Now, uh, I don't really need this line in here in this code. That's just going to confuse us. So we'll just go like that. Now I'm going to set the name of the dog. Let me set the name of the dog. Actually, you know what? Let me set the age of the dog. Now I have a little doggy at home that I love very much. Her name is Luna. And I'm going to put in information about Luna. But if you have a dog at home, I, re I recommend you put in information about your dog. And if you don't have a dog, you can pretend to have a dog and have a makeup dog. But if I wanted to set the age of the dog, I would go D dot set age. And Luna happens to be 11 now, so I'm going to set the age to 11. You can see that I go noun dot verb. Noun dot verb. D is the noun. That's the dog. See that? Here I made a dog called D. Here I'm using the dog. And the dot here is the possession operator. It basically connects the noun to the verb. I need to take a minute now and explain something to you. Let's look at this English sentence. The boy runs. Here's the sentence, the boy runs. Let's make it big. Uh, we're back to you, Mr. Mitty. Sir, can you tell me in this sentence, what is the noun? The boy is the noun. That's part right here. That's the noun. And Mr. Diego, what is the verb, sir? This is the verb runs. Let's say that you came from a foreign country and you didn't speak any English, and I just presented this single word to you, boy. Would there be any way for you to know whether that was a noun or a verb, Miss Ishita? No, there's no way for you to know, looking at a word in English, whether it's a noun or a verb. But in Java, it's easy to tell the nouns from the verbs because here you can see, this is how we would write it in Java. You can see that the verbs have the parentheses and the nouns do not have the parentheses. Furthermore, the thing that connects the noun and the verb in, in English is just a space. And the thing that terminates the sentence is a period. But in Java, it's different. We put a period to connect it because spaces, as you will learn quite soon, don't actually mean anything. You can put as many spaces as you want. The compiler gets rid of the spaces. So it needs some way to know who is doing the running? So here it uses the period to connect the boy and the run together. And here you can see instead of in English where we end our sentences with periods and exclamation points and question marks, in Java we end our sentences mostly with semicolons. So let's go back now and look at what we're doing here. You can see I'm calling the set age method on the dog that I created and I'm passing it information that it needs. Look, the set age method needs an integer to do its work. You can see that right here. You can see that the set age method needs an integer to do its work. So I gave it an integer, which was 11. What I'd like you to do now is to set the name of the dog to something and also set its weight. If you're having trouble, the person next to you can help you also. Please set the name and the weight of the dog now to something. What's, what time is it? 52 or 42? 52. Okay, where did we leave off? Um, next is Mr. Mr. Bello. Sir, do you have a doggy at home? What is the doggy's name, sir? Huh? Finn? Okay. Mr. Uh, Bello, how would I tell the dog that its name is Finn? Uh, 
like that. Okay, let's try that. It didn't like that, sir. We, we need to tell it it's a string. Do you know how we can tell it it's a string? Do you remember from the flag class, that flag project we had, how we can tell it that it's a string? It's, we need to put something before and after the, the string. Do you remember? No? Okay. Uh, Mr. Dominic, do you remember, sir? We need to put quotation marks. So if we put those in here, now you can see it turns green, tells it that it's a string, and we're good to go. Mr. Owen, do you have a doggy at home, sir? No. No? Sir, if you had a dog... How much would the dog weigh? Uh, 400.36 pounds. That's kind of a big dog, but we'll go with that. How do you set the weight to that, sir? Uh, uh, go ahead, sir. Uh, and did you have any numbers after that, or that was it? Uh, 400.36. Oh, 400.36. I see. Okay. Now, uh, Mr. Van Dusen, should I put this in quotes, sir? No. no, this is not a string. It's a decimal number. So I don't use quotes. So you can see I just leave it just like that. Now we've stored all the information about the dog. What we're going to do now, what we're going to do now is we're going to print the information about the dog. And so now we use the setters. Now we're going to use the getters to print the information. So in order to print information, you should remember from your dog, uh, so from your flag project, how to print information. You use this system out, println. And uh, Ms. Nuha, how would I print the name of the dog? Very good, Mace. So I go like that. And then uh, Mr. Burnett, sir, how would I print the age of the dog next? At age. And then lastly, there's the weight of the dog like that. Let's run this puppy. You see I said puppy there, it's a dog, you get that? Okay. Uh, let's compile it. And now to run it, I'm gonna minimize this window. And now you can see that a little arrow is showing up. This arrow with a dotted line means containment. That means that there is a dog that is contained in the tester class. The tester class has a dog in it. Let's run it. it remember, the main method is in tester, not in dog. So I'm going to come over here, and when I bring the cursor to the middle, the little arrow turns into a hand, and we're going to hit the main method here. And you can see that all the information about the dog is now printed on the screen here. So there is all the stuff about the dog that we created. Now, what we want to do next is we want to come into this dog tester and I want you to create a second dog with all different information, different name, different age, different weight. I'm gonna set my first dog here to be my dog's information, by the way. like that, and then I'm gonna create a second dog down here. I, I discussed with my wife the possibility of getting a second dog, but then she brought up divorce, so we decided we're just gonna stay with one dog for now. So, uh, but pretend you have two dogs, so what I want you to do is create another dog here, and then print that information. Leave this dog here, okay, don't, don't get rid of that dog, we just wanna add a second dog. So please do that now. Create a second dog here. See, look how I created a dog. See that? Now, can you use the same letter? No, you can't use that letter D. That's already been used. Use a different letter. But I want you to create a second dog and print all the information about that dog also. Please do that now. Okay, Mr. Gabe, are you all finished, sir? Excellent. Sir, what did you name the second? Well, how did you create another dog, sir? Okay. So this is perfectly good. I'm just going to give you one warning. There, there are two letters which make for really dangerous variable names. 
this is one and this is the other one. Can anyone guess why L and O are dangerous variable names? Mr. Gabe, can you guess why? That's right. They look too much like one and zero. So I'm going to ask you to shy away from using O as a letter name, sir. Pick some other letter. K. K is a good letter. Okay, we've got our dog here. And now, sir, can you tell me what was the, uh, the name, age, and the weight of your dog? Okay, Sunny is a good name. So let's go set, I'll set the name of the dog. Now here you can see I set the age, the name, and the weight. This order doesn't matter. On this dog, I'm gonna set the name first. And you went with Sunny, right? So how, how do I put that in here, sir? Uh, yeah. Sunny, is that how you spell it? Okay, like that. And uh, what was the next thing you did here? The Maybe the set the age? And how old was Sonny? Three. Do you actually have a dog named Sonny? No? Okay. And uh, what was the next one? Set the weight of the dog, right? And how much How much does Sonny weigh? Sonny's a little dog, 5.9 pounds, like that. And then what we're going to do is we're going to print the information about Sonny. Now, I'm just going to cheat and just copy this code over. So I'm going to do a Control-C and come down here and do a Control-V. But I need to change something here in order to print the information about Sonny. So, Mr. Gabe, what do I need to change in here, sir? I need to change this to a K so that I'm referring to Sonny now instead of Luna. And so now you can see I've got the two doggies here, all different. And so let's compile and run this puppy. And you can see there's the information about Luna. There's the information about Sonny. I want to put a blank line in between because... Uh, I don't want them so close to each other. So what I'm going to do over here um, in front of this uh, get name over here, I'm going to add in a little backslash n uh, as so that it, it, it skips a line before printing the name. We did this backslash n business when we had the flag. I'm just reintroducing it now as a character that can be used to insert blank lines. And so now if I run it again, you can see I have got a space now between all the Luna's information and Sunny's information. I like that much better. Okay, I'm going to show you one last thing today, and we're going to call it quits. We have about 12 minutes left. Uh, I'm going to come in here and add one more feature, and that is that I'm going to uh, add a method here called a two-string method. Uh, and I'm going to add a two string. And what this two string method is going to do is it's going to dramatically uh, reduce the amount of code the user has to write to print information uh, about the dog. And uh, so what we're going to do in here is we're going to say public string two string, just like that. Okay, it's complaining now because I don't have a return value set here. But I'm going to say return, and then I'm going to format all the information about the dog in this one method right here. So I'm going to say name, colon, and then um, I'm going to go uh, plus uh, name, and then I'm going to go go to the next line. So I'll go backslash n, and then I'll put in here the age of the dog. Uh, colon space and the age of the dog like that and then the next thing will be and the last thing will be the weight of the dog like that and i'll go uh weight like that okay so what i've done is i've created a line of code that can print all the information about the dog and i've put it inside this two string method now, if we run this code right now, nothing different will happen because we're not actually calling the two string method. You can see everything is still running the old way. But now that we have this fancy method, we can uh, go in here and get rid of all this code here for printing. We don't need this anymore. And what we can do in here is we can print information about the dog in a single line like this, we can go system out println, 
and we just throw the whole dog in there like that and it will know how to print itself and that's a pretty good deal so now you can see i've made the, the user has to work less the person who designed the dog code has to work a little bit more but they just write this two string code once and what happens here is that when you go to print something when you go to print an object of a class the printer looks and says hey that dog class does it have a two string method that lets me know how to print information about the dog and in this case you do here's the two string method that you built so now if i run the tester look how nicely the dog uh, the dog information is going to print out first i got to compile then when i run it look at that see that it comes out beautifully. Now I got to put a blank space in between here. This time I'm going to do a little bit differently. I'm going to put in here a blank line like this. Oops. I'm just going to go like this. I'll just put in a, sorry, a, a blank print statement like that to print a blank line. That's another way to print a blank line. Let's run it again. And now here's all the information about Luna. And here's all the information about Sunny. Now, what would happen if we didn't have that print uh, two string? I'm going to turn off the two string for a second. So I'm going to turn it into comments. Look how I can turn it into comments like that. I use the star slash to begin a comment and the slash star to end a comment. This whole thing is a comment. So I've turned off the two string. See that? No more two string. Now, if I go in here and I still try to do this, Look what happens. Okay, if I don't have a two string and I try to print the dog like this, you can see I get this gibberish. Now, those of you that have had computer science principles will probably recognize what these things are. What are they? I'm up back up to uh, Mr. Mitty. Sir, did you take computer science principles or you did? Sir, can you tell me what is that thing? Do you know? The part I've highlighted, can you see the screen? Or this one here. Here's another example. Any idea what that is, sir? It's a number, but it's a special kind of number, Mr. Mitty. Can you tell me what kind of number it is? That's right, sir. It's a hexadecimal number. And what it's trying to tell us is, hey, you told me to print this dog. Look, so you told me to print this dog, but you didn't make a two-string because I turned the two-string off. You didn't make a two-string, so I don't know how to print the dog. So all I can tell you is that there's a dog located at that memory location. So if you run it, if you run a print statement on a dog and you don't have a two string, that's what you get. So let's put that two string back now. So I'm going to uncomment the code now, turn it back into re real code. And now it's back. And so now when the dog tester runs, it knows how to print information about the dog. There you go. There's about five minutes left to class. It's free time for you now. You can use your phone or do work for another class or do whatever you like. But this is our little example of the first class we're gonna write, which is the dog class. We'll add more code to this class tomorrow when we create different types of dogs. That's it for today. Thank you for your attention.